When Gothic cathedrals first rose from the earth in the 12th and 13th centuries, the world had never seen structures like them, vast arches of stone and timber that reached toward heaven itself. What's often forgotten is that behind those stone facades stood a skeleton of wood, much of it still intact after 800 years. The question that's haunted architects, historians, and craftsmen alike is simple. How did the builders of medieval Europe make wood that refused to rot? These timbers have survived wars, rain, fire, and centuries of neglect, yet still hold their shape and strength. Today we uncover that Gothic secret, an ancient preservation technique so effective that even modern builders struggle to match it. The secret wasn't just the type of wood, it was the way it was prepared. The cathedrals of France, England and Germany were not built with ordinary lumber. Builders carefully selected green oak, freshly cut, high in tannins and full of sap. But instead of rushing to use it, they began a process now almost lost submersion seasoning. Logs were sunk into slow-moving rivers or ponds for months, sometimes years, allowing minerals from the water to penetrate the fibres while tannins leached out gradually. This transformed the cellular structure of the wood, preventing fungal growth and making it far less appetising to insects. This technique didn't just preserve the timber, it hardened it. By the time the wood was dried and cut into beams, it had a dense, mineral-infused core resistant to rot, moisture, and even fire. Builders at Chartres and Notre Dame referred to it as eau bois, water wood, because it behaved almost like a different material entirely. The resulting framework, once hoisted high into cathedral ceilings, could last for centuries without warping or decay. Medieval builders understood timing better than chemistry. To our modern eyes, their process seems almost primitive. Yet it relied on an intuitive understanding of natural cycles. Trees were felled during winter when sap flow was lowest, usually around the new moon. Builders believed wood cut during this period resisted decay better. Modern science has since confirmed part of their belief. Lower moisture content during felling reduces internal stress and prevents microbial growth. After submersion, the wood was slowly air-dried in shaded barns, never in direct sunlight. This slow cure prevented cracking and allowed lignin, the natural resin that binds wood fibres, to harden fully. By the time carpenters began shaping it, the wood had the density of stone and the resilience of iron. The process could take up to seven years from felling to final use, a timescale that really does defy modern impatience, but explains why those timbers have outlived their builders by centuries. Once dried, the timbers were further treated with the combination of natural oils, ash, and even smoke. Historical records from abbey workshops describe the use of linseed oil, pitch, and tar distilled from pine resin to seal the beams. The oils penetrated deep into the grain, locking out moisture and sealing in the hardness achieved through submersion and curing. In northern Europe, where smokehouses were common, builders often stored beams in smoke-filled chambers before installation. The process, known as smoke curing, infused the wood with creosote-like compounds, natural preservatives formed when tar vapour condensed on the surface. This chemical layer killed fungi and repelled insects. It's the same principle still used in Japan's yakisugi technique, 
where wood is lightly charred to create a carbon barrier against weather and rot. When you combine these methods, winter felling, submersion seasoning, slow curing, and oil or smoke treatment, you get timber that behaves less like organic matter and more like fossilised plant material. That's the secret that allowed Gothic roof structures like those at Westminster Abbey and Rheims Cathedral to endure centuries of moisture and temperature shifts without collapsing into dust. Modern wood preservation relies heavily on chemical treatments, many of them toxic. But for those seeking natural durability, the Gothic approach still outperforms most modern methods if done correctly. To recreate it, one can start with hardwoods like oak, chestnut, or black locust, species known for high tannin content and natural resistance to insects. The first step is submersion. Fresh logs can be anchored in a pond, stream, or even a large sealed tank filled with clean water. Let them soak for at least six months, for thick beams up to two years is ideal. This leaches out sugars and soluble tannins, while allowing calcium and silicates in the water to penetrate the cell walls. The key is to keep the wood fully submerged and away from stagnant anaerobic conditions that promote bacterial growth. After retrieval, rinse the logs and stack them under shade for slow air drying. Never kiln-dry wood that's been water-seasoned. The rapid heat destroys the structural benefits. Once dried, apply natural linseed oil mixed with a small amount of beeswax or pine resin, heating the mixture slightly so it penetrates the surface. Let it soak in for several days, then wipe the excess and allow the wood to cure fully. The result is lumber that can endure outdoor exposure for decades without chemical coatings. This process has already been tested in traditional boat building and restoration work. In France, historical preservation teams restoring Notre Dame after the 2019 fire used wood treated in nearly identical fashion, citing the need to replicate the durability of the original framework. The Gothic builders were not just artisans, they were scientists of time. Their secret lay not in a formula, but in their willingness to let nature do the work. Each stage, felling at the right moon, soaking for years, curing slowly, sealing with oil, relied on rhythm, observation, and respect for material. In contrast, today's lumber industry favours speed. Trees are milled and treated within weeks, producing timber that warps, cracks and rots within decades. By reviving the old ways, modern craftsmen and historians can learn something profound, longevity in materials mirrors, longevity in culture. The cathedrals stood for faith, but their wood stood for patience the discipline to think in centuries instead of years. For historians, that mindset reveals not just how buildings survived, but how civilizations built things meant to last beyond their own lifetimes. The Gothic wood secret that defied rot is not lost. It's simply been forgotten. It's a reminder that true craftsmanship requires more than tools. It demands time, precision, and trust in natural processes that cannot be rushed. Whether you're a restorer, woodworker, or just a lover of forgotten technologies, this method stands as proof that the ancients understood sustainability long before the word existed. If this exploration into Gothic engineering gave you something new to think about, subscribe to In the Beginning 
and share this with others who value history's quiet genius. There's still much the past can teach us, if we take the time to listen.